In this video, I'm on a mission to compare my brand new Canon R6 Mark II to the original R6 that it's going to be replacing in a variety of situations such as portrait and landscape photography, as well as video, to see if this camera really is a worthwhile upgrade for you and for me. As usual, I'm also going to be sharing the raw photo and video files from the video so you can download them yourself for free and make up your own mind. So the first half of this video is going to be the photo comparison. So if you're just interested in video, feel free to use the markers down below to skip ahead. We've got a lot to get through, so let's get started. So first up, let's look at some natural light portraits on both the R6 and the R6 Mark II. Do the four megapixels make much of a difference shooting in natural light with a prime lens? Let's start with some mid-length shots using the RF 50mm 1.2 on both cameras. The colours on both cameras match up nicely and straight out of camera I do probably prefer the Mark II colours as the R6 always has a yellowish tint whereas the Mark II looks more true to life to me. Once edited though both match up really well. Zooming into the face at 100% I can barely notice a difference in resolution or details captured between the two cameras. And at 200% I would say that the Mark II has rendered just a bit more detail in the iris in particular. Now taking a step back we captured more of a full body shot, making the model's face and eyes much smaller in the frame to see if those extra megapixels in the Mark II squeezes any more detail out of the scene to allow for a bit more cropping potential. Zoomed into 100% again, the answer seems to be not noticeably. And now zooming all the way into 300% shows maybe the slightest of advantages for the Mark II. But maybe we'll see more of a difference in a more controlled environment. I captured some headshots with a strobe using the RF 85mm 1.2 on both cameras at f8 to capture maximum detail. Both cameras have done amazing here and this lens handily outresolves both sensors. And zooming into 100%, even in this situation, that extra resolution of the Mark II doesn't show to be very advantageous. Zooming all the way into 300% again shows, in my opinion, a slightly cleaner image in the Mark II. I think the iris looks a little cleaner and more detailed, as well as a little more detail resolve in the eyebrow. I took some more shots but ultimately found the same results, where only in the absolute extremes do you see any kind of benefit to those 4 extra megapixels for these kinds of shots. I can't really see many scenarios where these tiny benefits make any kind of real world difference. Again at 300%, maybe a slightly cleaner, clearer iris on the Mark II image, let me know what you think. So let's move on to landscape where we are typically told every megapixel counts. I took a shot on each camera using the RF 24-70 of a really busy scene with tons of detail to see if we can see if that small resolution bump helps here. It's worth noting the framing here isn't exact and probably benefits the Mark II a little bit but zooming in to these cars at 200% I think the license plates are a little more legible and sharp on the Mark II image. So for resolution again it's only the tiniest details that are perhaps rendered a little clearer. But perhaps there are other benefits to this new sensor. I did some quick dynamic range tests by massively underexposing the scene on both cameras. Both of these cameras excel at recovering crushed shadows with tons of latitude in the dark areas to pull back. Both cameras also retain the colours nicely. Zooming in on some of the recovered areas, I don't think one is cleaner than the other and both seem to perform on par. Now overexposing these cameras, as with all digital cameras, is a different story and you have less wiggle room. Looking at both files, I would say maybe the original R6 retained the colour information a little bit better and perhaps also kept a little more detail if we zoom into the tower in the distance. I have noticed in other shots the R6 seems to do slightly better in overexposed scenes, but I am still learning the sweet spot in terms of exposure on the Mark II, so let me know if you guys find similar results. Now let's take a look at high ISO performance on both cameras. Consistently moving up the ISO range, I think the Mark II has maybe a bit more noise than the original R6, but does a slightly better job at saving the fine details, evident in the brick wall and fence above. 
this does change at 25,600 ISO, where I think now the Mark II outperforms the original R6 in both areas. So there may not be a giant leap ahead in image quality between the two, but the Mark II does have some other small beneficial upgrades for photographers. We have extra autofocus options and more control over the subject detection. For example, you can now tell the camera which eye to prioritize. This means no matter which eye is closest to the camera, the lens will lock on to the eye you tell it to, without having to toggle between like on the R6 and the R5. You now don't have to tell the camera what subject you want it to detect. Selecting auto means the camera does a good job at switching between detecting human and animal eyes, for example, on the fly. It will now also consistently toggle from human to animal. And I like this because on the R5 and R6, if you're set to detect human eyes, should you get the opportunity to photograph an animal or a vehicle, for example, if you don't quickly switch over the subject priority, the camera will tend to struggle to achieve focus. Another difference is the Mark II has a noticeably louder shutter. And speaking of shutters, you can now turn off a silent shutter when shooting in electronic shutter mode, giving some audio feedback when you take a shot. I wanted this, but never had it in the R5 and R6. So that rounds out the photo section of this comparison. Please let me know down below what you think of the R6 Mark II so far. So my main reason for picking up the R6 Mark II came down to the apparent video improvements. Namely the removal of the 30 minute recording limit, as well as the improved overheating times compared to the original R6. All of these improvements made it sound like the R6 Mark II would make an excellent B video camera to my C70. So let's find out and start by comparing 25p on both cameras, as well as seeing how it stacks up against the R5 using the RF 15 to 35 on each camera. So here's the Mark II in C-Log3 25p. It looks super sharp and detailed and I love the colours coming out of this sensor. The R6 looks great as always and matches up nicely. Finally, here's the R5 in 4K HQ, looking very clean and very sharp. So let's take a closer look at the R6 and the Mark II. At 25p, I think the Mark II has the slightly sharper image. In comparing the Mark II to the R5 in 4K HQ, the edge and sharpness now goes to the R5. On to 4K50, where the Mark II is a beast. This is some of my favorite 4K50 from any camera, super clean and detailed. I did always like the R6's 50p anyway, and it looks great here. We'll compare the two closer in a second. Here's the R5, which I have always felt had fairly soft 4K50. Looking closer at the R6 and the Mark II, the Mark II has the clearer, sharper 4K50. It also destroys the R5 at 50p. So now let's look at dynamic range, where in a contrasty scene like this, I wondered if we would see any improvements on the newer sensor. Looking at the scopes, we can see a very slightly flatter peak on the Mark II, suggesting there may be a bit more room in the highlights, but in practice, I find the results to be very close as I think C-Log3 is probably the limiting factor on these cameras. Looking at highlight and shadow recovery to the extremes by overexposing and underexposing heavily, didn't show me any huge difference in results. Both cameras again do quite well when pulling out crushed details in the shadows, but of course they have their limits. At the extremes, I think they perform very similarly with Neva standing out. Now onto high ISO performance in video, where they are more similar than different, up to 6400 ISO at least. Where the main difference seems to be in the busy branches at the top of the frame, I think the Mark II hangs on to a little bit more detail. At 12800 ISO and above, the Mark II is a touch less noisy and the original R6 looks a little bit mushy. At ISO 25600, again the Mark II is slightly cleaner. 
On the Mark II, we no longer have a 30 minute record limit like we did on the R6 and the R5. Now let's take a look at overheating where things seem to be improved quite a bit on the Mark II. At 25p, the original R6 overheated at an hour and 10 minutes in for me, whereas the Mark II will record continuously until you exhaust your battery, where my fully charged battery died at around 2 hours and 25 minutes with no hint of overheating. At 50p, we see more improvements. The original R6 would overheat after around 45 minutes of record time. I did restart the Mark II here as I was worried I would fill my card, but it continued at 4K 50p for 1 hour and 40 minutes total until my battery died. The overheating warning was showing though. Now I didn't test battery life extensively, but during these tests it was obvious that the Mark II has a significant bump in battery life, consistently a bar higher in charge than the R6 throughout these tests. I hoped with the Mark II that maybe Canon would take this opportunity to fix the annoying IBIS wobble when filming on wide angle lenses that we see on the R5 and R6, but unfortunately not. It's still there, it's no worse or better. Some more welcome additions for video on the Mark II include this toggle switch for photo and video mode. As you can see, it now toggles instantly between photo and video mode, a quicker solution than on the original R6 where you had to move through the mode dial to switch. The custom profiles now work in video mode too, so I can now toggle quickly between 4K 25p and 4K 50p with a single flick of the mode dial instead of having to go into the menu. Another small addition is this red box around the screen to indicate when you are recording. You also now have a more intuitive overheating indicator that shows you how close your camera is to overheating. This indicator now rises and falls with ambient temperature so it isn't just a software shut off like on the R5 and R6 at launch. I like this feature a lot. These better thermals seem to come at the cost of a slightly noisy camera however where it has an audible whirring sound in photo and video mode and the R6 in comparison is practically silent. We now have had pre-recording implemented where your camera will catch up to 5 seconds of video before you even press record. We also now have false colour, which I was really excited about, but in true Canon fashion it comes with an awkward flaw, where it can't be used at the same time as the view assist in C-Log. Hopefully this will be fixed in a future firmware update. Now onto handling differences between the new Mark II and the original R6. They are more similar than different, with the Mark II sharing pretty much the exact same body as the original R6, which I'm fine with since I loved the R6's ergonomics. The main differences come in at the top of the camera, where we see a new hot shoe design, and the on and off switch is now on the right side of the camera. I prefer this as it makes it easy to toggle the camera on and off with one hand. As mentioned earlier, we now have a photo video quick switch where the power switch used to be on the R6. The back of the camera is mostly identical. Overall, some small but welcome improvements in my opinion. So with all the tests and comparisons said and done, who is the R6 Mark II a worthwhile upgrade for? If you would upgrade, let me know down in the comments why. In terms of photography, I really think upgrading to the Mark II would be a lateral move for most existing R6 owners. Sure, 4 megapixels is a small increase in resolution, but it is an increase nonetheless. It is possible to see the improvement it provides in some circumstances. I just feel for 99% of people, those four extra megapixels will go unnoticed most of the time, unless maybe you print very, very large, maybe. I guess the thing with the original R6 is that 20 megapixels was kind of on the low end in comparison to other full frame cameras in its price range. So this little bump up to 24 megapixels, I guess gives you some peace of mind that it's in line now with the competition. For video, however, I do think there are some worthwhile upgrades here. I do slightly prefer the image coming out of the R6 Mark II compared to the original R6 in video at least. 
It also has probably the best 4K50 on the market without having to spend a whole lot more on something like the Canon R3. I also think it beats out most of the competition in this price range from other brands such as the Sony A7 IV or the Lumix S5 thanks to having no crop in 4K50. Thanks to improved overheating and the removal of the 30 minute recording limit, I think the Mark II makes for a capable and reliable video camera. Canon have also made an effort to include more video centric tools and features that we usually just see on its cinema line such as false colour and pre-recording. The R6 Mark II is probably one of Canon's best hybrid cameras now too thanks to the introduction of the quick switch between photo and video mode. But I'd love to know what you think. Do you already have the R6 and will you be upgrading? If so, let me know why down in the comments. Don't forget, as I mentioned at the start, there's a link in the description to raw files from the comparison, including photo and video, so you can download them, see for yourself, and they may help you out if you are trying to decide between these two cameras. As always, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.